comes up, though, I'm going to give you a few examples of how these cuts are affecting communities across the state. In Cincinnati, Councilman P.G. Sittenfield discussed how, due to the budgetary constraints, Cincinnati had to make deep cuts to the city's fire and police department. It has been six years since the city has been able to have a new police recruit class. The Cincinnati Fire Department has endured brownouts, a scenario when you don't have enough personnel to staff your fire units. One example of why we should be investing this money into the local government fund and giving back the dollars that the state of Ohio has taken away by passing the budgeting over the last two budget cycles. And with that, we are going to bring up State Representative John Patrick Carney, representing the 22, 22nd House District of Ohio. Representative Carney. Thank you, Senator, and, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, as the 11th of 12 children born here in Ohio, I am the product of public investment in Ohio. I went K through college to public schools and but for investments by taxpayers into people's ability to have a ladder up, I wouldn't have been able to graduate from Ohio State University, go on to a successful law career, and now be here representing the people of the 22nd House District. What we know is that here in the United States, we've always made a concerted effort, whether you're rich or poor, to give you access to the sorts of things that will give you upward mobility. We believe in it as a fundamental part of the American dream. Unfortunately, while I've been in the General Assembly and John Kasich has been the governor of the state, he has made a decision that workforce and education and the ability of people to get the skills necessary to fill the jobs of the 21st century is not as critical as it once has been. And in fact, we've seen that through the fact that they have given a $6,000 tax cut to anyone who's making over $350,000 a year in the state of Ohio while burdening middle class and working folks, not only with more taxes to pay, but fundamentally undermining their ability of their children to access the sorts of training they need to be successful. And not only children, but undermining workforce development to give opportunity to those who are making minimum wage right now to get the skills necessary to make more, to be able to make a mortgage payment and put food on the table and take care of their children. And you don't have to take my word for it. Cranes, a business magazine in Cleveland, indicated that the reality is this governor is a tax shifter. He's adept at transferring the burden of taxation from one party to another while giving the appearance of reducing taxes. Shifting the load is how he can balance a state budget that grows year after year, even as he beats the drum for lower individual income tax rates. That's from Cranes, a business periodical in Cleveland making that statement. Not Democratic members, folks who are focused on business and they realize what is the number one reason why a business will stay in Ohio or locate to our state? The quality of our workforce. If you do not have people to fill the jobs necessary to make a profit for your business, you will not locate yourself in the state of Ohio. And we know as we undermine the ability of people from middle class and working class and low income backgrounds to gain the skills necessary to fill jobs that Ohio will only fall further behind. Giving the rich more so their prosperity leaks down on the rest of us has never worked. And it will not work today. It's rhetoric over reason. We should fun fundamentally change and support evidence-based policies instead of rhetoric like this governor. Thank you very much.